So this is it. It's Thursday the 5th of September when I am recording this and I am going car camping. Now the weather where I'm going looks pretty good and it's going to get better. Here it is currently raining, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so I'm hoping it doesn't chase its way across the country to where I'm going to be. Um, ready to go. I have, as usual, planned with military precision. So I have details in my Google calendar of maps, um, map locations where I'm going. I've plotted out my first car park arrival. Should be about an hour and a half-ish. Uh, looks pretty good. I have two backup car parks as well, just in case, which will mean me having to walk further to get where I want to. But we can cope with that. That's not a problem. Um, what else have we got? So I've got my like usual types of hiking gear. Hiking boots, stuff like that. I have water, food, all the usual bits and pieces. And I'm going to record the journey as best as I can because we're going somewhere completely brand new. Now, I'm going to tell you where I'm going purely because the title will give it away and you'll work it out in no time. I'm going to a place called Sunderland Point, which I saw a few months ago on a series called Villages by the Sea. And it's an interesting little place. I'll put a map up and lots of interesting stuff to see there. And then I am going somewhere else after that. And then I have a full day-ish planned for tomorrow before I come home. But you'll get to see all that along the way as it happens. So let's get the show on the road.
What about that for a park up? It doesn't look like it floods here. I'm on grass that looks like it's always grass. And I've seen no warnings about flooding on the signs up there. The tide is right out at the moment. You cannot even see the sea. It's not even there. This place is amazing. I'm going to get myself organised. quick look at my roots. I'm walking that way, so left from facing the sea, and that will get me to Sunderland Point, which is my first point of call, which is the place I saw on Villages by the Sea. Now the reason I've come to this point and I'm walking down is because Sunderland Point, as you'll see on the map, is literally a point, and when the tide comes in, the other end is completely cut off. There's nothing really on Sunderland Point apart from people. You can walk all the way around it and there's some interesting things to see but you know there's no big shops, there's no parking, no cars, no nothing. So that's one of the reasons I was intrigued to see this place because it just looks so different. So I'm going to get organised, sort out my selfie stick and all the usual gubbins and, um, and then we'll get walking. Here's a view of where I am. Very windy here. It's not cold, which is nice. Here's a little board of birds. Dunlins, knots, and bar tailed godwits we have here. Let's go and have a look at the signposting. There's the signpost. Oh my god, it's so windy I can't even hold this straight. All the things you can and can't do. say anything about flooding. No overnight camping, no fires. I've seen evidence of a fire here. Quad bikes, trail bikes, they probably all come down here. Um, so that's where we are. There's me, looking a bit vulnerable. So I'm going to start walking this way. It says bridle way this way. Assuming it's down there, and then we go across what is, I presume, salt marsh. Car park feels a little bit dodgy, I have to say. <laughs> but I'm here. It's nothing of any value in my car. Unless someone wants a king size duvet and a very old thermos cup. I think we'll be alright here. That tide is way out. I tell you what, it's nice to be by the beach. It is so nice to be by the beach. And record all of my day today because the battery will last on this camera. I'm taking it really easy today. This isn't even a hike, this is a stroll. This is two days of strolling because obviously I'm going to be in my car overnight. 
and I don't want to overdo it because sleeping's hard enough as it is in a car without being really knackered and really sweaty and really gross as well. So let's walk to Sunderland Point and see what we shall see. cattle out there on that grassy stretch. And there's evidence of cattle all around me. Now it looks like I have to bray around to the left and follow the track and it might turn into a road briefly and then I come back to the coast because this is all part of the section that is quite marshy and floody and clearly for animals. Imagine at low tide you probably could walk all the way down the actual beachfront, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick to the tracks that I'm being told to walk because that's what I want to do. Just enjoying being away for two days. in my car. It's not quite the ultimate freedom because obviously you're not completely free but it feels it feels rebellious, it feels different, you know, most people aren't doing it and I like that I can do this in my own way it means that I can go and do these things go down here then. It says this is a bridal way. Gosh I'm glad I brought my hiking boots. It's about quarter to eleven now so it feels like a late start for me. By now, if I was on a hike, I would have reached my end point. <laughs> don't know if you can see that white bird. That's a great egret. We get a lot of egrets in the UK now. And down here on the... Ooh, another car's turned up in the car park. That's good to see. Um, yeah, we get a lot of great egrets and the little egrets as well. Um, in the UK now, along our coastal areas. Seagulls are very quiet today. That looks like a, a high tidal mark, doesn't it? If you look here, I mean it's quite marshy, but this is proper grass, so I mean this must be walkable all the time. I'm just going to press on. <laughs> Hope the car isn't floated away by the time I get back. a curlew. I thought they'd be around here somewhere. When that tide goes out they'll all be down looking for the the lugworms and things that live deep in the sand. 
That's why they have those long beaks. Wow, getting warm. I think I'm going to have to lose my hoodie in a minute. There's the cows. This has been a great place to do some winter bird watching, I should imagine. I can think of some great places to go for bird watching now. A couple of cows in front of me. chunk of wood. There's loads of wood that's been deposited here. I presume by the tides. Lovely old bits of stone wall. Don't know what's up there. There's a little hut. It looks like it wants me to turn off there, maybe, bridle path. But there are two people walking straight down, so I think I might just keep going straight. So it looks like I need to go up here. There's a landmark here that I want to have a look at. That's a bird hide. Oh, this is pretty. Look at this. Proper mate gate. And this is my first point of call. And yes, that is what it's called. I'm pretty sure that's a bird hide. be a great place to bird watch in winter. I bet this place is full of birds that winter, over winter here. They've got a great view for it. Fabulous. Um, gosh. this very well before I came out. It's got a little window in it. Oh, here we go. This is the Horizon Line Chamber by artist Chris Drury. Built by Andrew Mason and team. Commissioned by Morecambe Bay Partnership. Supported by the Heritage Fund. It just says, mind your head. just hit my head. Well done. Um, I don't really want to go in there. It's beautifully built. Yeah. 
don't know what I'm looking at there. <laughs> try and add some more information about that because I don't really know. A memorial to the immoral slave trade of the 18th century. So, this is what is written upon the gravestone. Here's some history of the slave trade. Here's a map, and it says at the end, the grave that marks the burial of a man known only as Sambo. It serves as a grim reminder of the cruel exploitation of enslaved people. And the name Sambo is like using the N-word. But this is clearly... that people come. Look at this. years later people think of him. gave him a, a Darth Vader doll, I think he'd be rather confused. Right, now having seen that, I now need to go back to where I was. And keep walking that way. So I was okay. So as I was walking towards where Sambo's grave was, there were two ladies in the distance walking the opposite direction to me. And I just met them on the way back. And I saw they had lots of bags with them and I wondered if they were picking um, for crafting because people make things out of the driftwood and things that comes ashore but uh, they're not their litter picking because of all the rubbish that comes in on the tide. Now this line here, that straw line looks like hay and straw, that is the tide line so you can see that it's its furthest point out at the moment and apparently it runs on something like a two-week cycle going in and out but 
one of the ladies said that they're due a very high tide coming in at some point and it will come up to this line so you can still walk all the way down the coast this is the way in and out of Sunderland Point when the tide's in because the other way which is the causeway where you can drive when it's when the tide's out um, you cannot drive it on the way back it's completely flooded it's like going to Lindisfarne or something Apparently when it comes in, the tide stays for about four hours or something and then it goes out again. But it's a very slow tide. Look at this. This is ultimate estuary bird watching land. And I've seen a few more egrets. So up there, there's a section where you can see where the channel is, where the water comes in. Oh, you can see them flying up. Those are egrets. And as always, I shall put pictures of the birds that I see, so that you can see what I'm seeing. I think egrets, I think we used to have egrets, and then they became either extinct or almost non-existent. And now they're back. So can I walk this? I mean it's got a gate there but this doesn't feel very... <laughs> Genuinely I was expecting uh, a really easy walk today and it's not going to be is it? I mean, on Google Maps, this looked as easy as anything. But I think I probably should have taken a different route. It is like hiking. I do feel like I've gone the wrong way. around the corner and see what we can see. There may be a way back up. I mean, the tide's out so I'm not going to drown. Oh, it smells like a proper beach. I mean, there's a building there. Wow, that wind is strong. I wonder if I can get up where that house is. I see footsteps in the sand here. So Somebody's walked down here.
is pretty much the end of Sunderland Point. There's a little lighthouse out there which I failed to even mention but I had seen and there's a fun thing. Look. Steps. I can get off the seafront. Yay! So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Walking on normal ground again. I was worried then that I was going to have to go all the way back. <laughs> and track my steps back to that bridle way. So there's a couple of houses on the seafront here. I mean, I would kill to live here. This is amazing. So this will be the driving route in for the cars coming to those houses. I feel a little bit disorientated because I hadn't realised how far round I was. It smells so good. Oh look, blackberries. It's good. I didn't bring any of my food with me. I've left everything in the car. Drive me over until I get back. Oh, look at all the elderberries. I haven't had any elderberries this year. I like to make an elder elderberry cordial. A dedicated bench. What I like about today is that it doesn't matter if I get a bit lost. I can't go far wrong. I'm in civilization. I'm not up on the moors. And uh, I don't really have to be anywhere else by a particular time today. I can park at that car park as long as I want to. So when I'm finished here, I'm going to head back to the car, have some food, and then I have to make a pit stop at the petrol station because I'm nearly out of fuel. And then I'm going to go to Sainsbury's, buy a couple of bits, use the bathroom and prep my car for the night. Oh, look at this. Look at these pretty little houses. Got floodgates here, look. That lady told me that they um, they're expecting a very high tide to come. Look at these fabulous little places, though. What a place to live! I bet the home insurance is high if they get flooding. Cottages of fishermen and shipwrights. books there for Sunderland Point. This is wonderful. Look at this place. Public footpath but a private road. I love the beach. I love the sea. When I was a kid, 
going rock pooling was a major thing. We often went on beach holidays. Oh, I can smell it. That salt air is absolutely amazing. So the water line here will come right up here. So I wonder where the cars go then. There must be another way out. They can't have to drive all the way down here to get out. Because that means they're trapped on high tide days. Maybe they do. At least I'm not trespassing. But look at that. a slip for boats but I think the cars are using that. <laughs> I need to find out how the cars get in and out. I mean there are lots of cars parked around where those seamen's cottages are so maybe this is the way through for them. Must be a, a road I've missed when I was walking along. feels like a place to come to every year, you know. Look at that post there. That suggests that something's been here for a long time. Dolphin House. Look at these little houses. Absolutely stunning. Ah, look, the lane. You see? Car Lane Weshaw and Sambo's Grave. That is where I should have walked down rather than coming from there. But from there it was rather nice. At least I know how to get back now. We can walk all the way around here by the looks of it. Look, there's a post box. private houses. There are lots of caravan holiday homes, holiday camps around here, but no um, no Airbnbs by the looks of it, thankfully. Look at that gorgeous place. Oh, that looks empty. It's being renovated. Is that? It's not a new build, is it? So 
So according to the map, I've been right around the point, and now I'm coming back up the other side. <laughs> I think that is probably the causeway where you can drive in, but it will flood, and you can see by all the boats there, I should imagine. I think I'm going to walk around here a bit, and then if I can't turn left and back up, I'll go back up to the bridle way for the lane. cars parked here so it can't flood quite up here maybe it is a tidal area so this is where you will end up getting into trouble if the tide comes in yeah look <laughs> you stay there too long you're gonna end up floating home I'm just wondering if I can get round here or whether I need to go back up the other way. And that's the joy of this, I'm getting a little bit lost but it doesn't matter because I have so much time to kill. It genuinely is just some very beautiful seafront houses. birds on the water's edge there, which might be done a little bit. But of course I didn't bring my binoculars. Let's carry on round here. Let's go up that ramp and see what happens there. I feel like my risky route paid off there. It's a wonderful circular. Look at these old boats. I don't think, oh gosh, get down a hole there. I don't think these two have been on the water for quite a while. Can you imagine living on a boat like that? It's something like Jaws, isn't it? Where they tackle the shark. That one's called the seagull. Not looking like it's doing as well as the seagulls, that's for sure. So we'll back, walk back up to where that bridle way was and follow the signs that we should take. It's that beach smell. Oh. Oh, it's so good. You see, I like walking on the moors, but you give me a nice, quiet, seafront. It's very hard to decide. What birds am I looking at there? They're all in summer plumage, that's what I've got to remember. I don't want to disturb them, but I want to see what they are. here as well. Oh, I wondered why I was getting confused. Ah, that looks like a turnstone down there. Sea 
go. Yeah, there's three or four lapwing there. Let's get a vista of these buildings here now. Oh look, there's toilets. Would you add them? all the way down here on the point. So they must have a tourist thing going on here. It's a volunteer community group that manages everything here by the looks of it. up here on this bit and then hopefully you can go out but with that tide coming in like it does I would imagine you've got to be pretty fast because when the tides come in boy the tides come in for a second. Why not? Oh. Place here. Teeny weeny windows. Little places here. Swallows. Oh man, look. 
I glass top that and turn that into a conservatory for growing vegetables. <laughs> So this is the route I would have taken if I hadn't I've gone all the way around the coast. But it's nice because I've had two completely different routes today. It's like a circular. I'm not even bothered about using a map. This is not the kind of place that you get lost. Church. Oh, it's now the Mission Heritage Centre. How lovely. The boat in the window. Look at that. That's pretty. nothing to see. Look at that tiny little outhouse. So that's where we've come from there. And now we are heading this way, which is the bridal way. Oh. There's the little um, what's it line place. Walking back along the front, there are more people here at the moment by the looks of it. It's a nice ample back. Tide looks like it's still out. I don't know when it's supposed to come in again, but I'm gonna head back to the car for some lunch. Turn you around for that last bit of the walk and then we'll get back to the car. Is it curly? Good timing when I put my camera on.
flatness of that cloud all the way across there. It's fantastic. Oh look. A cuttlefish. Cuttlefish bone. So it's inside a cuttlefish. It's like it's internal, it's skeleton. And that's the thing you give your budgie. Oh you little bird. I need to look you up. I don't know what you are. You look like a warbler, but you've got a big white flash on your tail. In your tail, you could almost be a wagtail, but your tail's too short. I'll have to look that up when I get back. <laughs> you have to memorise what you've seen or heard, and then <laughs> look it up on your phone when you get back, and hope you haven't forgotten the important details. Good oh dear. That's the end of that bird. That's a shame. Back at the car, properly windswept. A couple of walkers have just asked me how they get to Sunderland Point, so I've given them good directions, <laughs> not the ones that I used. Um, the tide is coming right in now. It's crazy. When I arrived, so I got here, what, three hours ago at the most? Well, about maybe three hours ago, and all you could see in front of you was wet sand. And now I could walk out to that. Right, I have the pasta that I made yesterday. This is, uh, so I've only got spaghetti pasta, <laughs> I haven't got any other pasta in. So it's spaghetti pasta, we've got mushrooms, uh, roast beef and pesto, basil pesto. So that's lunch. More cars arriving now. God, I love pesto. I need to eat these actually, their sell by date's a bit old. I picked these up as a freebie quite a while ago and they really need using. There are so many birds flying around out there. I always eat picnic style when I come out on these things. There's no point in worrying about um, cooking hot, fo hot food. I don't really care about that. So I've made two of these pasta pots. I've got another one for tomorrow, the same. I brought a couple of bread rolls I had some of that um, caramelised onion hummus still in the fridge, so I've brought that to have with my bread. Uh, oh, I've got hiccups now. Oh dear. Eating too fast. Boy, does that sea move fast. <laughs> I've finished my food. I've made myself a cup of tea in my thermos cup. <coughs> I am going to have a little walk down to the front because it's about 30 seconds walk to the seafront now and just to have a look at the sea. Gonna get close. So I'm gonna do that. I'll take you with me. 
windswept. I've got a cup of tea in my pocket. <laughs> Just going to walk down to the front here. I don't know what that building is. Need to find out. These bits of greenery will be submerged at some point. Rock pools of sorts. They're not proper rock pools. Got Dunlins down here. Oh, that might be the ferry port there. Yes, because there's a ferry port here. You can hear the Dunlins. I think out there there are oyster catchers. And in the distance, over the other side there, there's a huge mass of birds and they're all taking advantage of the water coming in and all the bugs coming back up to the top of the sand. <coughs> Gonna try not to disturb the birds because they're just here in front of me. Chattering away to themselves. Just gonna have a little wander along this stretch. close I am to the sea now. So this fantastic little car park here, I can't remember if I said, you'll get maps and things anyway. <coughs> it's Car Lane Car Park. I think they call it Potter's End or something. I'll double check that. That's a fantastic little car park. Free and largely unused by the looks of it, certainly while I've been here. It's perfect for just coming down to the front here when the tide's out or bird watching. You some great bird watching here. And for walking over to Sunderland Point.
some little murmurations. I hope you can see this. But it's like flocks of birds flying left and right all the time. The Dunlin are tiny and move in huge flocks to protect them from predators. And these are the ones I was telling you about that fly like shoals of fish in the sky. But I don't even know if you can see any of this. Because my camera is not up to this and they're actually quite far out to sea. They're darting around the whole time. In case you weren't sure it was windy. <laughs> it's a bit windy. It's really warm though. Potentially a couple of other things to see this evening after I park up where I'm going to stay for the night. I'm not arriving there after dark as I often do. Um, it's a park up right near the seafront. But there's an interesting ruin of some sort of chapel and a graveyard. So it doesn't matter if I arrive earlier, although it's pretty much dark by half eight now. So I can go and do the bits at Sainsbury's, and then I can park up there and go off like I'm a walker, and then come back and then stealth park when it's dark. Um, I think I'll get away with that. And it's, it's a residential area, but it's not massively populated but you'll see all that later. It's, um, where did I find this road? I think I found it on Park, park for Night. They often come up with really good residential stealth parking places, so you're not in anyone's way, you're not causing any problems, but you are still in a safe, um, like a safe area. I like stealth camping, I like parking in plain sight because if something happens um, I want there to be you know people around of some sort so I always try to park in residential streets but quietly and out of the way so I don't cause any problems. So hopefully, this is a recommended one. It looks pretty good on the map. I have backups if I need them, uh, so I should be okay. But this is great. just rolling up. That's the fourth, one, two, three, four, that'll be the fifth car. We've got a few passing through. Right, I'm going to finish my tea and then I will tidy the car a little bit probably and head to Sainsbury's. I really need to fill my car up with petrol. I was just about to head off. I'm still at car lane car. I was just about to head off and um, a cyclist came down and as he went past I went hello. And he turned around and came back and I thought oh god. And he used to live in Scotland, came back about two years ago and now lives in Carnforth which isn't that far. He cycled the whole Pennine Way on his bike and that was the bike that he had with him.
Do you know what? I'm going to eat a banana and then I'm going to go. So far today, um, I walked 11,000... What was it? What did I walk today? Hang on, let me have a look. Uh, I walked 4.71 miles that round trip to Sunderland Point. So I've walked a total of 5.39 miles so far today. And I'm hoping that I can do a little bit of extra walking once I get to my night spot because I'm right near the beach. So I'm going to leave you here and I'll meet you at Sainsbury's supermarket.